So Johnny, one of the big questions that I get a lot on my channel is why can't I stream movies or TV shows on live streams? I see everybody else doing them. Why can I get in trouble for that? So what do we need to know in terms of streaming movies, videos, TV shows on live streams? Uh, I'm going to harken back to uh, a moment in the 90s. If you're a 90s kid or an 80s kid like myself, you'll definitely remember it. But do you remember when you would pop in that VHS tape and, of course, the VCRs yeah. like gurgling and all that? And then you got that blue screen with the FBI shield that said that you can't infringe on the copyright because it'd be a federal offense. That's why. It all boils down to understanding that uh, films, which are usually owned uh, by film studios, uh, even though a director and producers, there are multiple people that are behind the scenes making a film possible. At the end of the day, the copyright of a film vests with a film studio. And only under copyright law, if you create a work of authorship, that copyright owner can exercise certain rights. One of those rights is public performance rights the, or public display rights in this context with audiovisual works. The ability to publicly display it in a public form, in a movie theater, on DVR, on streaming platforms, so on and so forth. So you know, film studios, like let's say Disney company, the Walt Disney company, they have the ability uh, to stream any Disney, Lucasfilm, Marvel Studios, Nat Geo title on Disney Plus, on ABC Network, on Disney Channel, in movie theaters, anywhere where they, where Disney content would be exhibited because the Walt Disney company and their sub parent and the sub companies under them are the copyright owners of that content. So Iron Man, is owned by the Walt Disney Company and Marvel Studios. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker is owned by Lucasfilm and, uh, and the Walt Disney Company. All these films are owned by these entities. Therefore, they have the right to exercise those rights, the public display right, the public performance right. Think to yourself, if your name is Joe Schmo, or check if, you're the na if your name is also the Walt Disney Company or Lucasfilm or Marvel Studios. And if it's not, then you do not have any permission whatsoever to exhibit those types of film titles, any shows, anything of that sort on TikTok, unless you went and got permission from those film studios to exhibit it on those platforms. And do not say no copyright infringement intended because it is totally copyright infringement. I cringe every single time I see that headline. So what happens if somebody does forego listening to this warning and they actually do that? What could be the repercussions? So several. One, there could be a cease and desist uh, that's going to be issued to the uh, to the copper to the uh, person that's streaming the uh, the film title or the show on TikTok. Um, usually the violation is obviously going to be under the Copyright Act of 1976, but also it's going to be a violation of the DMCA, the Digital Millennium Co uh, Copyright Act, which has been created to not put the onus on internet platforms like a TikTok, but instead puts the onus on the individual user who is using those social media platforms like TikTok to make this copyrighted content available, albeit in a very illegal fashion. So there's one scenario that happens there. Um, there, the other scenario is there could be some type of account takedown as a result of this type of uh, behavior. TikTok has extremely strict guidelines that they are willing to enforce. Instagram has extremely strict guidelines that they're willing to enforce. All these other social media platforms have these same type of guidelines. And odds are, if you were to look at it, they will make it very clear that if you ever violate somebody else's copyright in some type of fashion that would even violate the DMCA or the provisions under copyright law, that could lead to a suspension of an account, maybe even a ban of your account on those platforms. So think to yourself, is it worth the risk at that point? And probably the answer is no, unless you you make a living and thrive off of, you know, having account takedowns and, uh, you know, doing this type of thing over and over again. So if somebody wanted to get the license to stream something, what steps would they have to take? They would just have to contact the uh, film studio that is the copyright owner. Odds are they would either deal with the licensing department at that film studio or a rights and clearances department that is responsible for, um, you know, uh, issuing these types of licenses. The person licensed that is interested in licensing that film or television show would have to provide a very specific request laying out what permissions are they exactly uh, seeking. Are they seeking worldwide uh, distribution rights, uh, you know, territory rights, or is it going to be North America only, or is it going to be North America and South America? Uh, you know, sometimes geo-blocking uh, is required in some scenarios. So you have to think to your mind, do you want it in all territories or in limited territories? 
What's your media? Do you want it in all media now known in hereafter device? So do you want it on computers and phones and television sets? Or do you want to limit it to specific types of media like digital only media? So social media platforms, uh, phone, uh, uh, you know, like mobile phones, computers, things of that sort. Then the other question is, what, what term do you want? Do you want a one-year term, a five-year term, an in perpetuity term? Do you even want it even lesser than a year, like maybe five months, even a week? Those types of questions are going to come up in the licensing process. But most importantly, I would hedge my bets that a film studio is not going to license out an entire film or a television show unless you're either going to pay up a lot or they need a lot of clarity as to how you're really using it. Because odds are, and I hate to break everybody's heart if they want to do this, if you want to stream the Goofy movie on TikTok it's in, in its entirety and you go to Disney and you ask, make that request, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. Maybe for a small screening with like, you know, 50 people at a small movie theater, that makes more sense. But streaming it on TikTok with potentially thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people watching, it, it's it's too broad of, of a platform. And honestly, the film is available on Disney Plus. Disney's just going to tell you, just get a Disney Plus subscription, you know, end it right there. So it, th there's that factor. And then, of course, I didn't even touch on it, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. The budget is going to be insanely expensive, especially if you're trying to license an entire movie for this type of use. And because it is so easy to access these streaming platforms like Disney Plus to watch their content, we have to point out it is not okay for you to stream your Disney Plus subscription onto places like TikTok. If you've got questions, drop them down below and you can go over to Tony's TikTok and Instagram to learn more at the IP Professor.